Christ Life Ministries International brings to you a program, Hearing Jesus, with Prophet Zadia Kale Alpha. Position yourself in the dimension that will guarantee you nothing less but the life of God. That dimension is the voice of His Son. Cultivating the true pattern of Christianity through sound doctrine for fellowship with the Spirit and proficient ministry among our hearers. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We're very excited to be coming to you right now through the Trinity Broadcasting Network, the African chapter, right from Uganda. My name is Prophet Alpha Xavier Peter Kale, the senior pastor of the Christ Life Ministries International. And uh, we are excited about the opportunity that we have to bring the gospel to Africa. And we know for a fact that the God who sent Jesus to the world shall give this message to you right from wherever you are and you will be blessed. You will be touched and you will be changed. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank God for our partners, those that are partnering with us to see to it that we come to you every time we will be coming to you. Thank you so much and God bless you mightily. Our program is called Hearing Jesus and we'll be doing quite a number of series on the same. And uh, I would like to take again the same opportunity to ask you to take this program serious because they will grow you. They will grow you. Hallelujah. So if you may, please turn with me to the book of John chapter 5 and verse 25. John chapter 5 and verse 25. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Now these are the words of the Christ himself, the Son of God himself. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. They that hear shall live. It matters that the voice of the Son of God be heard. That's the pursuit of the heavenlies. It's the interest of God Almighty for the world to hear the voice of the Son of God. Because he says, in the end of it, after that they've heard the voice of the Son, they will live, regardless of their situation, regardless of whatever it is that they are going through or are faced with. He says one thing is crucial. One thing is for all men. One thing has been guaranteed for all men. It's the legal right for all men to hear the voice of the Son of God. And right wherever you are right now, I'd like for you to think within yourself. Think within your heart. Ponder and ask the question, have you heard the voice of the Son of God? Every time those summons come to you, do you perceive the voice of the Son of God? Every time you read those books, do you perceive the voice of the Son of God? Every time you hear that worship, do you perceive the voice of the Son of God? Anything short of the voice of the Son shall rob you of the life that comes with that voice. It shall rob you of the true testimony of what it means to be a part of the life of God or to be a partaker of the very life of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In the four Gospels, at the Mount of Transfiguration, God Almighty, with His voice, 
said of how that Jesus is the beloved son of the father. And he desires that all men hear the son. Matthew 17, 5, the Bible says, While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Hear ye him. The God you worship, the God you pray to, through the name of his Son, has helped you understand has helped you capture the frequency that he wants you to tune to. He has helped you position yourself in the dimension that will guarantee you nothing less but the life of God. And that frequency is the voice of his son. That dimension is the voice of his son. Right wherever you are, I want you to think about it. The voice of his son. The voice of his son. The voice of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amazingly, the wisdom of God is for application. But you see, the wisdom of God is trapped in his word and we get his word from the scriptures wisdom is for application when you read the book of Psalms 90 and verse 12 you will understand why I said to you wisdom and in this case the wisdom of God is for application he says in Psalms 90 and verse 12, So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. When God dispenses wisdom to the world, He intends that the hearts of men are applied to the same. Now, in this instance, by His wisdom, He says, it's needful. It's not negligible. It's, it's necessary that every man on the earth hear the voice of the Son. That's the wisdom of God speaking. And if that is the wisdom of God speaking, then to apply the heart of a man unto this wisdom would mean that man take the responsibility to discern what the voice of the Son is. And we will help you distinguish the voice of the Son from the many noises. We will help you distinguish the sound of the Son of God from the many noises that be in the world today. Praise the Lord Jesus. But it's important for you to understand that there is a voice that he intends for a particular dispensation to hear. That's why he says, the hour is coming. The hour is coming. The age, the dispensation, the time, the era. And this is the dispensation that God has apportioned. Not the voice of a prophet or a teacher or a pastor or an evangelist, but the voice of the Son of God. If the prophet must speak, he can only speak in synchrony with that voice. He can only speak as one that echoes that voice. He can only speak as one that reflects that frequency. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'd like for you again to look at John 5 and 25 and catch these highlights. He says, the hour is coming. That's important to note. And he says, and now is. He says, when the dead shall hear. That's the second catchphrase. 
that you should take note of. Then he says, the voice of the Son of God. That's the third catch phase. And then he says, and they that hear shall live. That's the fourth catch phase. Hallelujah. So, by the scriptures then now you understand, you only have to belong to that particular hour. Praise God. To capture that frequency, that sound, that voice of the Son. Because he has appointed it to speak, not just to a few, but to everyone that is a part of that dispensation. He says, this dispensation we are in, this generation we are in, now is, now is, regardless of how that voice comes or where it comes from. For as long as it is the voice of the Son, God testifies that your end shall be life. Your end shall be life and life only. Whether you have cancer, your end shall be life. Whether you are afflicted of devils, your end shall be life. Whether you are afflicted of HIV, your end shall be life. Whether you are afflicted of uh, COVID, your end shall be life. Ebola, your end shall be life. Praise the Lord Jesus. And the life we're talking about here is the life of God. We're talking about a realm that does not accommodate corruption. We're talking about a realm that embraces oneness with divinity. We're talking about the testimony of consistent fellowship with God Almighty. But again, you see, the foundation to that is hearing the Son of God. Wherever you are, say with me, hearing the Son of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, he says, they that hear that voice shall live. The practicality now of this wisdom, as is revealed in John chapter 5 and verse 25. Begins with us distinguishing the four highlights that I talked about. And the first is the dispensation, which now is. The second is the hearing by the dead. The third is the voice of the Son. And the fourth is the consequence as a result of hearing that voice. That is, they that hear shall live. Praise God. So, let's look at these four um, highlights separately. Praise the Lord Jesus. So let's take a look at the word hour. Let's take the, a look at the word hour. The literal implication of hour uh, relates with what Paul talks about in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 to mean a period of time. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. He says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Praise God. When you take the Greek rendering for the word worlds, that word is aeons to mean ages, to mean dispensations, to mean a period of time. Praise the Lord Jesus. And that's where the word hour in John chapter 5 and verse 25 perfectly fits. So when he talks about hour, he's referring to a period of time. And it's amazing that Jesus has concluded the time from when he said those words in John chapter 5 to the time before he returns 
he has concluded it as one hour he has concluded it as hour we are all participants in that space of time and what does that mean you see the word of god is true it does not fall to the ground hallelujah his word is his testimony and his word is truth so when he says in that time the voice of the son has been appointed to speak it's true it is true i have good news for someone that needs life that needs to experience more than the world has to offer someone who has come to the end of all life and they're saying i, I need i need god i need i need something that will give the impression in my spirit like i have never had before the good news is the voice of the sun exists in this aeon the voice of the sun exists in this space of time you only need to discern it you only need to discern it and like i told you i'll help you discern it praise god thank you jesus so oh glory glory to jesus also let's take a look at john chapter 4 and verse 23 in that narrative he also speaks of a dispensation and in this case the kind of hour that god is talking about through paul the apostle it was interpreted so perfectly and and, and i'm going to show it to you hallelujah in john chapter 4 and verse 23 jesus said but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him so you see the father seeketh such the father seeketh such understand this child of god amidst the many noises amidst the many sounds the many frequencies some of which are orchestrated from human wisdom there's a sound that the father has purposed for all men to hear and he has dubbed that as true worship it is true worship to god when you are able to discern the voice of the son and attend to it and attend to it hallelujah hallelujah romans chapter 11 from verse 1 to 25 we're gonna read this together he says i say then has god cast away his people god forbid for i also am an israelite of the seed of abraham we want to to give meaning to this hour to this space of time this dispensation in which god has appointed the voice of the son if we understand how he perceives this dispensation then you will appreciate the the voice of the son and for you which is a minister again by this teaching you'll be able to rightly position yourself and your ministry you're not gonna guess about ministry hallelujah you're not gonna guess about ministry praise god so he says i say then has god cast away his people god forbid for i also am an israelite of the seed of abraham of the tribe of benjamin god has not cast away his people which he foreknew what ye not what the scripture says of elijah how he maketh intercession to god against israel saying lord they have killed thy prophets and digged down thine altars and i am left alone and they seek my life but what saith 
the answer of God unto him, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. I'd like for you to take note of that, and the rest were blinded. Eight, according as it is written, God has given them by the spirit of slumber eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back all way. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. That's powerful. we we'll continue with 12. He says, now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means that I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lamp is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, 19, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. 21, for if God spared not the branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. 23. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. 24. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to the nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Now, this is where I would like for us to, to take note, because verse 25 defines the relevance of the church of Jesus Christ on the face of the earth. The church to which you and me belong. Hallelujah. And it's in that structure, church, that we all are endued with responsibilities and assignments for the sake of the world. Even as we submit to the head of the church, Jesus Christ himself. Praise the Lord. And so, when you understand verse 25 of Romans chapter 11, you will know exactly why the church exists in this time. And it will help you appropriate the perfect understanding of what God expects of you in this time. He says in 25, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. What is the mystery? From 1 to 24, it talks about the graphing in of the Gentiles 
the non-believers into the olive tree. But more to that, I'll help you understand that it simply means the concentration of God has now shifted towards the Gentiles and he has given commitment, divine commitment and appointed divine grace, praise the Lord Jesus, to fulfill that which he intends for them which are among the Gentiles. And what is it that he intends for them? It is life. It is life that they may experience of the life of God, that they may experience what it means to be a partaker of the divine life. Hallelujah. So this is a mystery he's talking about. But before I, 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 I touch on this mystery, we ask the question, who are the Gentiles? Thank you for tuning in. That was Hearing Jesus with Prophet Xavier Kale Alpha. To partner with us or for any other information, reach us through the details available on the screen. Christ Life Ministries International. Christ to influence.